What's Pam up to? Hunter x Hunter episode 105, Resolve X and X Awakening. Love this ambiance, the past two episodes. Got no rhythm. Yeah, this is really interesting. I love it. I'm engaged. It's amazing. I'm thrilled. Right place, right time. In the zone. Flow state. Well, maybe not quite. Compulsion. X compulsion. And now he's even worse off. Like, it's over. He's been defeated. He didn't have enough brain processing power to beat her at full capacity. Now he has even less available RAM because he's worried about worrying, which is all too real. <laughs> the way these things can spiral. What do you do except be big and bow at the entrance? He's just a very powerful doorman. The noise though. <laughs> the noise is what really sells it. This is what you're losing to. It's a little bit superficial. Just a bit. At this point, I don't know, it's what do you even want if you're the king? Do you want to win or do you want to lose? It's not even about the game anymore. It's about himself. It's his worldview at stake, which in a very real way, I think, is himself at stake. I was thinking about this today in relation to being okay saying you don't know something. I think at best, like optimal conditions, a person will truly be at a masterful level of like a couple things. There's just way too much time required to be at the top level of something for there to be more than that. Unless you're just like one in a billion. You can be decent. You can be fairly good at a great number of things because getting from the nothing level to the decent level is way faster and easier than getting from the decent level to the perfection level. But in the course of daily life, we encounter just so many things, so many different fields and topics. Yet the way people talk and the way they express their knowledge does not match this discrepancy. For most things, the answer is probably we don't know well, but we all... <laughs> No, well, or at least we think we do. I've come to believe there are sort of like these these slots, these topic slots for belief. And without really conscious, dedicated work, they will be filled with something. And that something will probably feel like it's the best thing. Come to think of it, this might be specifically for things for which there was some urgent need in our biological history. So social things, anything that presents a danger, how to live one's life, etc. And that relates to my guess as to why this is, which is that it literally at some point was for survival. So a challenge to a worldview, a challenge to something in, in a belief slot gets treated emotionally as a threat because we're wired with this underlying assumption that without something in a belief slot on a topic that's important, we are at great risk of destruction, which is kind of cool to think about and know because I'm always going to like it to find out I can eliminate things that I don't need to devote energy to. As a side note, looping into this is another emotional incentive, which is to believe you have influence over the things you're worrying about, which many times you don't. <laughs> Just based on what I know about her or feel about her, I don't think it will make any difference. Her wish is probably going to be to play more Gunji, another game of Gunji. I would like to play Gunji, maybe a tissue. Do you have a choice? I don't need my left arm to play Gunji, so what does it matter? Is this not a concession of loss though? It's not about Gunji. From this, it seems like he's still not seeing this as an intellectual pursuit or something he can learn, but more of wanting to be the best and dominate her. Because the wager does not really relate to Gunji's skill. My life. <laughs> what, 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 is it, oh, is it a condition? You can't beat her with the arm threat. You cannot beat her with threats. She, there's nothing that she fears. Bro, you can still play Gunji if you lose. Is this a similarity she has with him? Best at Gunji or nothing else. To grind. Burning fields. That doesn't really add up, but okay. Harsh. <laughs> oh no! Don't give them any money. <laughs> Damn, that's like just a real life non-Nen condition. That is the show telling you the parallel for Nen in real life. I think it was exactly my take on Nen when I first learned about conditions. That's, that's sort of what I was thinking. You don't want that kind of victory. 
みます。さようか。It's gonna be crunchy. それもないと申すか。<laughs> Maybe this is the answer. Yo no inocho, so tis te inakata. Oh, damatio. So say some no. I also don't think the king making a wager on his life would be the same thing as her being okay with a wager on her life. Accepting a bet to try to force yourself into the mind state doesn't mean you've achieved the mind state. Kake wa yameda. Kudara no mane o shita. He's growing. Oh my god, that was unnecessary. <laughs> I don't want it. I did not want it, but okay. Everyone lost their arms that day. Oh, there's Rip of his own arm. You give it to him. <laughs> this is the greatest thing that's happened so far. On Gonin Klua's side in the war, on the human side of the ant war, that left arm was more powerful than like 95% of Nen society. And they have no idea. You were right to get slapped, standing in the way of greatness. Bro, they're just undoing themselves. <laughs> this poor girl. It's so cool. Don't make wages you don't want to accept. We've already gone down this road. She's not afraid. You can't beat her. Oh god, he's just so you're annihilated. It's so embarrassing. For the love of God, this girl needs a tissue. I think in here there's a very important distinction to make. One that I think I missed or didn't grasp when I was younger. Maybe it's a few things that stack on each other. Firstly, it's really important what game you choose to play. If your criteria for winning is something completely out of your control and worse, in someone else's control, you've lost before you begin. Or at the very least, you're gambling. You're betting against the house. If in setting your game, your conditions for winning are things that are up to you, you can still lose, but that will at least in some way be your choice. It is difficult and I, I think kind of unrealistic to have every game be, you know, just my inner world, just how I I think there is no circumstantial element, no unknowns that affect the outcome, because at that point, you're not really engaging with the world. And we are human creatures. For that middle ground area where you have action, you have agency, but it's not all in your control. The steps are at least clear. You maximize your skill, your ability in that thing. For any of those things, you can choose to play or not play. But, and here's the thing that I was misunderstanding, not playing a game that you do care about also is losing. You don't win by taking a sour grapes approach to games. An analogy in this show would be if the king at this point is like, you know what, Gudgy's stupid and just kills her. I think that's clearly a loss. Part of what makes this match so interesting is that I think it contains the, the whole spectrum of games being played. It also points to why she will always win and why he can easily lose, regardless of the outcome of Gunji. Gunji is a game where there is no built-in inherent advantages for the other person. It's an equal playing field. The actionable part for her is maximizing her ability in Gunji and playing Gunji. It's also what people would refer to as an infinite game, where it's not a one-time thing, but a process that can continue forever, which will bring passion and joy, growth. The doing of the thing itself is the goal, much like how that would be the case for someone whose goal is and takes pleasure in personal growth. She can lose at Gunji, but she already understands and accepts the consequences of that. There's no fear there. So in the bigger sense, in a, in a way, it's not exactly a loss. It would be just a consequence that follows logically and is accepted emotionally. It's a close system that needs nothing outside of her control. The King's game, while he's also playing Gunji, is something like being and being acknowledged as being superior and higher value than every other human or animal on the planet, which is automatically a failure because one's value is probably not something the King can decide. This is why the sour grapes thing is so important. You could change your thinking about what valuable means. You can skew the, the characteristics or criteria arbitrarily to make anything look real, but like, you know, there's actually an objective layer to it that you can't change. So it'll always be unsatisfying. And that's a loss. In this episode, he actually tries to weasel out of it a bit by trying to switch it to like fear and respect. But because she's self-contained, that's not something he can force out of her. And so again, instant loss. To try to make this a little bit less abstract and more practical, it will probably come down to axioms that are really obvious to hear, but are easily forgotten in practice. So like one of the best, most enduring games you can play is to endeavor to live up to your own ideals. Don't make your happiness dependent on other people's emotions. Make your happiness dependent 
dependent on your own vision of yourself. For things that you care about, for which you must engage with the world, figure out what's actionable about that and crush those skills. And perhaps make your improvement the goal rather than the score at the end of the game. Given that you've actually managed to find a game that follows those criteria, is good for you, is actionable, and points to something you must do, don't weasel out of that by shifting the lens to make yourself feel better without actually doing any work to honestly, dedicatedly play the game. A common example of this would be rather than improve yourself, try to bring other people down so that you're better by comparison and make the biggest, best game you can possibly identify at any given moment with room to change the way you evaluate your own success or failure rather than any moment to moment things that happen that are out of your control. No, back to Gunji. <laughs> at least these two are reunited again. Gotta give them credit. They're, they're doing really well. Thanks to Gunji. <laughs> Thanks to this little girl with a snotty nose. Thanks to the king literally disarming himself. <laughs> that was so funny. Yes. Biggest threat. Existential rage and panic. The ally we never expected. This is weirdly like a great example of something I've been talking about forever in shows, but it just doesn't often come up. It's the danger of this sort of utilitarian thinking where like this outcome is better than this outcome. Therefore, this outcome is moral. Not to totally discard every element of that, but there's a major assumption in there, which is that you actually can predict the outcome of things. This actually is more like what life feels to me. You're looking at a choice on an axis and trying to determine which way to go. And then out of like the third dimension, something else comes in. This is just something that they could never have planned for ever in all their wildest dreams. Yeah, this is one of those rock, scissor, paper, self-defeating lines of thought. We got trouble at home. Trouble in paradise. I'm starting to see like how the various players in this side of the arc can combine into like a super strike. They need to get together and collaborate with like Gon and Camilio. Ugh. I just hate all of them. I hate all of these lesser ants. They're so irritating. Shocking. Man with the pipe. My little pony. So much a pony. <laughs> Good for you. Dr. Bryce. Love what you've done with yourself. Man, these guys have steely resolves. Imagine the absolute fear just being solo running towards this capital, this palace. That's why they built all that up. <laughs> it's a great camouflage. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a running bush. One of many. This means other people can use the portals too, right? Not just friends. Who's talking right now? All I see is a, is a running bush. Makes sense. That's what I'm saying. It's insane. The real Nen that you feel is your growing sense of intense danger. Another way Nen is real. I love how much fear they have for Neverpito. That's why never having met her, just from the, the Nen feeling. They all know her. That was a lie. Whose name we still do not know. Oh yeah, he's still alive. The lawyer. Okay. Oh, for real? This lends itself so naturally to one of those memes. What my friends think I do, what I actually do. Glorious leader in a dim room sending faxes. Another life lesson. If you're going to play this kind of game, make yourself indispensable. Boy, did we ever learn that in the York New City arc. There's a lot now doesn't know. Yeah, 
Thanks, thanks for your talent in faxing. <laughs> Available bodies. Oh, that kind of body. Was that really necessary? <laughs> oh, they drew her with a scared expression just to really drive it home. Thinker, Thinker Bell? This is eHarmony North Korea edition. Whoa, I had just asked what she was up to. What are the chances? Palms. Yeah, damn, Palm. She's like, I'm not going to be written out of this story. Just because I'm crazy and wild. Pam cleans up, huh? Pom? All hands on deck, I guess. Hot darn, this is exciting. So cool, so many things going on. It's a very random, very out of left field, but partly because of that genius stroke of writing that this whole Gunji thing happened in the middle of this climactic war. <laughs> it also logistically solves the, the problem of like, how the hell could they possibly defeat the Chimera Ants with this much power? And the answer is, is that they're all kind of human. Usually the power system in Shonen or shows is a metaphor for the scale of things as they occur in human life, but Hunter Hunter kind of goes directly there. I mean, that also is life, right? But but it's not limited to like, we're gonna explore all of life through this one thing. It's like, we will explore life through Nen, but Nen is just a limb on the tree of life. The central part of which is that huge, fundamental, impossible to express perfectly question of what is life? What are sort of the objective structures and measures for a human being, for living well, for being great? Watching shows has sort of cured me of any lingering inkling of this seductive idea that everything is subjective, that anything can be right. At least for practical human purposes, there is definitely an objective underpinning to humanity as we see value and goodness, but because it's too big for us or it's bigger than us and definitely bigger than words, we can't exactly get it down into a small digestible codified thing but we can feel it and it comes through so clearly in moments like this like watching the king play the girl in i almost said shogi you can feel that he can never beat her in the in some of the ways he's trying to play you know who wins and who loses without the outcome of the gunji match being shown speaking of things that make the show exceptional this is yet another interesting example of one of my favorite episodes that doesn't have any of the principal characters <laughs> 